The Husenvelt Sprint pedals have to be some of the best looking pedals on the market today. But how do they compare to Thrustmaster and to Fanatec? Well in today's video we're going to look at the Husenvelt Sprint pedals and compare them to the Fanatec CSL Elite pedals because that's what I've had in the past. And I've also had the chance to use Thrustmaster pedals as well. As well. So we'll see how they compare to my personal opinion. But one of the reasons why you might be considering a pedal upgrade is because your pedals are broken. So is the Husingvelt Sprint pedals worth £600? Well let's get into the video and take a look. So what's the first thing that stands out about these pedals are they're a brushed chrome like metal and they feel really nice being the way they've been machined. They have a nice uh, logo, the H of the Husenvelt uh, logo in them and they feel really nice and when they're rotated the H is reversible so it doesn't change direction which is great. These pedals when you look at them look something that have been taken straight out of a race car which is something that I think most sim racers would like as this gives you a feel of uh, being immersed more in the virtual car. These pedals definitely don't have a toy feeling which some pedals on the market after a while definitely start to give you the feeling they're more of a toy than a piece of equipment that should be taken seriously and these pedals definitely give you the vibe that you're serious about your sim racing which possibly should be the case being how expensive they are. But what comes in the box then from straight from the factory when they're brand new? Well, let's have a quick look at an unboxing I did earlier in the year. I literally got these straight from the delivery driver and started unboxing them as soon as I could on my desk. So this gives you the first impressions and how to assemble them and I'll talk you through the bits that I got and the experience I had assembling them. As you can see I picked up the pedal plate for these pedals and I will talk to you for the reason why I think everyone who gets these pedals should pick them up even if you have a base where you can screw straight through and just have the pedals. There was nothing wrong at all with these pedals but the only thing, thing seems to be is in the shorter stands, one of the stands seems to have almost no coating on uh, one of them so it had gone all sort of rusty as you're seeing right now. But other than that they are in perfect condition so I was able to mount them straight away. Uh, you'll notice when I was mounting it that it comes with all the parts you need to put it together so the spanner and the uh, little allen key you need to hold everything together and you'll also notice when I was putting this together, these pedals together, that the faces and the actual angle is very different to what I uh, said it as when I actually put them on the rig because when they turn up the pedal, pedal plate was as max as it could go and also it, the uh, what do you call it the nut or bolt at the bottom had been put at the lowest settings the pedal was almost uh, already at almost like a 35 degree angle so there's lots of adjustability on these pedals and we'll go into that in further detail in a minute. So you can see at this point in the video um, that I have finished assembling the pedals but I noticed that the pedals uh, are really high for the way I usually want to use them because I like to sort of push rather than lever and luckily if you buy the um, base plate to basically rest your feet on they come with extra long stands so I used the extra long stands and it elevated it and it gave me a really nice uh, position for my feet when I flipped the pedal faces around as well even though now that I'm trying to switch to cart boots now that I've changed rig uh, it was really helpful having lower basically my feet lower on the rig more being able to push rather than sort of an angle so there's lots of adjustability on this 
set of pedals which is a real plus going forward and comparing these to the CSL Elites as I came from them now I know they're not in the same price bracket but the fact that there is so much adjustability with these pedals really makes them one of the best for feel and tactile and being able to adapt and change to what you want obviously you can get lost doing this but the fact you have about 10 holes at the back to adjust that angle so if you wanted it bolt upright you could if you wanted it leaned you can have it leaned whichever angle you want so that's fantastic and that's the same on the brake and also the gas I don't have the clutch it might be sank I invest in but obviously you can look at other reviews that cover the clutch now with the accelerator I would say it is definitely such a step forward compared to the CSL Elite because you're able to actually put some pressure and there's the adjustability with the spring on the back with the nut as you can see so if you like a bit of push in your accelerator rather than it being just all floppy you can do that which is fantastic which is something that I really struggled with the CSL Elite because it felt like in the end I was just pushing a floppy pedal now with these <laughs> even though it might seem like a downside I now end up being able to put pressure on the pedals and it makes my foot slightly numb after two hours which means there is a nice balance then for balancing the throttle when it comes to any car I drive now when it comes to the brake this has a really similar feature but it's obviously a lot heavier you can adjust it with the thread and the nut again on the back to adjust how much almost uh, leverage there is before you hit the dampeners now what this allows you to do is almost set uh, almost a bite point you would have in a real car so you know how much you can almost be prepared to push and as soon as you get to that point on the dampener you're able to feel when you are applying brake and this can give you a very nice sensation through the pedals and there's a, a lot of adjustability to this because you can have it very stiff at the front if you want basically immediate braking effect with no almost um, this, uh, gap between you braking and the pedal doing uh, the actual action of braking or you can adjust it to there is quite a big gap so there's almost built in a dead zone into the pedals on purpose so you can then feel like real calipers or real brakes as it were on older cars or oh, and uh, GT style cars so so much adjustability on these pedals but be wary when you are fiddling with a brake pedal because I had this happen to me when you take out the um, I can't remember what it's called all of a sudden but when you take out a pin to adjust the angle of the pedal the whole pedal fell apart in my hand and I slightly freaked out because I'd never dealt with something quite so mechanical as this so I had to basically line everything back up and try and line up the pin and get it back in which you can obviously do because these are so easily adjustable but it's something to be wary of if you're not comfortable or taking pedals apart or not used to this just make sure you keep all the olives because there are ones that can fall out that are in between the pedals and the plates that hold the pedal uh, mounts so then pretty good adjustability and lots of different ways to adjust these pedals with the amount of dampeners you get as well so i guess the real question is then do these pedals actually help you say for actual driving because otherwise there's no point spending so much money on a set of pedals well, I could tell you that they definitely do help for modulation of the brake and the accelerator. And I was not expecting the accelerator to be so good. It was actually one of the standout points I felt. Uh, being able to have that pressure and being able to modulate it and come slowly on the power for the best possible uh, exits in the WTCR leagues that I run. Now, with the brake, this is... A game changer I think in load cells when it came to coming from the CSL elites now why do I say that because when I am able to break I'm able to come off slowly actually naturally feel even more so compared to 
load sale to load sale compared to the CSLs come off and then come back on. So I'm actually able in combat, in race to race, uh, wheel to wheel fighting, get that break in just right to try and almost allow the car to come further forward into braking zones. So this has really helped me be more consistent under braking, which I'm really happy about. So overall then, how are they? Well, they're a fantastic set of pedals, very heavy and very well made. And they're endorsed by Williams Esports. So definitely something to think about as you might think, are oh, they just endorsed and actually they're crap. No, not at all. They're really good. If you're tempted, if you've got the money and you're thinking, should I get the Ultimates? I'd almost suggest buying these first because the Ultimates are more for real sim racing drivers. And this is something I've heard from actual racing drivers from stuff I've watched online and from actual other YouTubers experience having to go with the Ultimates. So these are a fantastic set of pedals. I would not hesitate to pick them up if you are thinking about getting them. So hopefully this helps in your decision making. Hopefully guys, this has given you a good understanding of the Who's About Sprints and uh, seeing what they look like as in when you're building them and the advantages you can take away from say uh, other pedals. Uh, what I'll do is as this is run on for a bit, I'll make another video comparing the looking at the CSL elites but comparing it against a higher end set of pedals uh, if you could like and subscribe that would be fantastic as I'm a little channel so any uh, followers is fantastic but thank you very much guys and I'll catch you in the next one this is Billy Goat Boy signing out see you guys on the track